Welcome to Real Grief, Real Healing with Mindy Corcoran. I am your host, Mindy. A friend of mine told me in early 2018 that she saw a vision of me with a microphone in front of me. I laughed at the time and said, I don't see any microphones in my future. Less than a year later, I was recording my first podcast on this show. I'm not going to say, I hope you enjoy this podcast. My podcast is not truly meant to be enjoyed. Real grief, real healing is just that, real and raw. I provide you an opportunity to learn and share in the grief others are experiencing, and then we share how they are healing or perhaps not. Grief changes each of us in some way. Many of my guests have been encouraged to open new businesses, start foundations, and in general, work to make the world around us a better place. Grief is universal. How we decide to move onward, seeking healing, is individual. A significant part of my healing comes through the courageous kindness actions of others. As you listen to my podcasts, you will hear how you can give and receive courageous kindness too. Together, we are better. Welcome to Real Grief, Real Healing with Mindy Corcoran, taking a deep dive into the reality of the difficulty grief brings and offering insight into the healing available to each of us. Today, episode 23, The Healing of a Shattered Soul. And now your host, Mindy Corcoran. Hi friends, it's Mindy Corcoran. Welcome to January 2021. Oh my goodness, let's all just breathe a sigh of relief. (sighs) Literally, take a deep breath and um, let's do that one more time. (sighs) So there are so many things that happened in 2020. I'm not, that's not what this podcast is going to be about. Um, But there were so many things coming to my mind that that all of you have gone through and been through, and some of them we've done individually. Some of the things that we've been through, we had to be alone. Some of the things that we went through, we only had to be six feet apart from one another. Some of the things we've gone through, we needed to wear a mask. Um, It's just been such a tumultuous year of 2020. And so welcome, welcome, welcome to 2021. I want to talk to you today about a task that I had to do on my own in 2020. And that task was, I put it upon myself, but that task was to finish a manuscript that I had started at least four years prior, for sure four years prior. Um, I turned in a manuscript to a publisher um, on December, the first weekend in December. I want to say it was, I should probably have this date emblazoned in my mind. I think it was December uh, 11th, 10th or 11th. I turned in my manuscript. And I didn't realize how much stress I had been putting on myself to write the story, to choose the right words, to select, you know, the cream of the crop stories and the stories, frankly, that I could remember. So here's what I did. I wrote a manuscript and I finally came up with a title that I feel very good about. I feel confident in this title that it is who I am, which was very important to me. This is the first book I've ever written. And I can say that uh, it's a book because it was 88,000 words when I handed it to them. I don't know if it will end up being 88,000 words. I don't know what they might do um, to it or with it. when we start having that conversation. But when I handed them the manuscript, it was 88,700 words. That's a lot of words. And I wrote all of them. 
I either, I, I well, I definitely wrote all of them. I didn't say all of them. And I'll get to that in just a minute. But when I turned that in, I just the collective years and crying and stories and memorials, arguments, anger, fear, just all of these emotions that I had written about, I could just let them slough off my body, slough off my heart. And I felt so much lighter over the weekend and then even into um, this next week. I just feel so much lighter that I have, at least for now, taken it off my desk and uh, placed it on someone else's lap to take a look at and to, you know, put their hands on and their minds around and to help me share the healing of a shattered soul. The Healing of a Shattered Soul. That is the title of the manuscript that I sent in. And I, I hope that that's the title of the book. That would, be my, that would be my desire. Because healing is a lifelong journey. Notice I didn't call it the healed shattered soul. It is the healing. It is a, a continuous process. And I'm in a different continuum now than I was two weeks ago. And I'm in a different continuum right now than I was a year ago. And I could go on and on. And so I remember where I was when I started writing a lot of words, just a lot of words that I felt like were needed to tell the story. I was on an airplane, and I was flying back from seeing a very dear friend and client. And uh, she shared a birthday with Reet. They were both born on May 21, but years and years apart. And she was a dear friend, and I had gone to see her and to see her daughter And I was on the plane on the way back, and all of a sudden, just this flow of story needed to come out. And I typed and typed and typed. I typed two flights back um, from Connecticut to Kansas City on that trip. And that was the beginning of me really putting the book together. And I I have to tell you, Melinda... She's going to know who I'm talking to. Melinda, that entire chapter didn't even end up making it into the into my final piece because it was a launching point. And I look back now, like today, and I think, why did I even write all of that if it didn't end up being in the book? And so I'm not an I'm, I can say I'm an author because I presented a book, but I'm not knowledgeable as an author to be able to explain why some stories make it in and some stories don't. Um, again, some of the stories didn't make it in because I just frankly can't remember them. And uh, but but the stories that did make it in right now in the manuscript. I hope that they tell the progression of the healing of a shattered soul. And so what happened in my journey is I I wrote and wrote and wrote, and I I had actually written 60,000 words. And it was important to me, this whole word count became important to me because I just started Googling, like, what makes a book a book? How much do you have to have? in a book for it to be a book or to be a memoir. And then I would be asked, people would say, are you writing a memoir or what are you writing? And I really didn't know. I had to do a lot of Googling. I liked the Google. I was looking. I was um, asking questions. I went to libraries. I asked um, my friends at Rainy Day Books in Kansas City. I I did a whole little tour there one day and looked through different uh, uh, memoir section and picked up several books to read to help me along my journey. And so it's funny, I did. I, I, 
I had written 60,000 words all on my own. And it was kind of a mess of a story, but it just, I just put it all out there. And, but I was also trying to uh, run a wealth management company and I was trying to open a foundation and run an event called Seven Days Make a Ripple Change the World. And so I, along the way, was introduced to a, a friend, Brooke Lattice. And Brooke, I will now call you Brooke Brundage. And so I was introduced to Brooke Brundage. And she sat with me um, and sat by herself for hours on end and took my words and pieced them together for me in a and as best she could to, to piece together the story that I was trying to write. And we spent the better part of a year together working on this. And we did present that to a publisher. And the reviews we got back were not horrible, but it also wasn't going to be published. And so that piece of the manuscript sat dormant for almost two years. And I picked it up again, really about the time I got asked to do this podcast. Funny thing is, in 2018, I was in Kansas City living. We had moved Lucas. Lynn and I had just moved Lucas to Florida. And Lynn was ready for us to move to Florida, and I was not ready at all. And I went to see a dear friend and a woman I call my healer, Cookie Harvey. And at this uh, session with her in particular, she she does Lomi Lomi massage and energy work. And in this particular session, she told me two very crucial things. She shared with me, one, that Lynn was rowing the canoe for our family where it needed to go, and that I needed to jump in that canoe and go with him, and that he knew what he was doing. Because I really didn't want to follow him to Florida. I wanted to stay where I was safe and sound with the memories of Dad and Reed's murder. And the other thing that Cookie said to me, and I am laughing about this because I was so angry. I was so angry when I got to her house. I was so angry at Lynn. I had saved rose petals from Dad and Reet's funeral, and I had saved them. I had I had kept them safe. They were in vases. Uh, they were in a jar. Uh, they were in diff- a couple of different spots in the house. They were in a book or two, and in the process of getting our house ready for market and putting our house on the market. The roses were thrown out. The rose petals were thrown out. And I could just hope you are collectively gasping because that's what I did when I found out that Lynn had thrown away these rose petals. It took every ounce of me to not have a screaming fit with him about that. But here, let me just get you back into my session with Cookie when she says to me, get in the canoe of life with Lynn. He knows where he's taking you. And then I said, but he threw away the rose petals. How can he know? And she said, what rose petals? And I said, the rose petals from the funeral. And she just looked at me and said, Mindy, you can't move forward. You can't heal if you have dead things in your life. You can't heal if you have dead things surrounding you. She said, thank goodness he finally threw away those dead rose petals. I was just tearful and aghast that she said this, but she did, and I took it to heart. And I I went home and I hugged him, and he said, I'm so sorry. He was, oh, he felt so horrible to send me off into you know, a rage and most likely more depression and sadness. He he knew I was struggling with this move. And I just came back and said, Cookie said it's okay, so it's okay. I should not have dead things around me. And so that was this launching point 
and I do have a point to the story, <laughs> that was a launching point that I knew I really needed to be going where I was going and I needed to be listening and I didn't know why. We never know why. I shouldn't say we never. Most of the time we don't know why. Sometimes we might have an inkling. I did not know that in September of 2018, after moving to the Orlando area, that I would be introduced to Reverend Cynthia Alice Anderson. I didn't know that because my friend Dr. Michelle Robin was coming in to speak at a church and I offered to be there for the day, I didn't I didn't know I was going to meet Reverend Cynthia Alice Anderson. I didn't know that she would invite me to lunch two weeks later. I didn't know that she would ask me to host a podcast on her experience of the Soul Channel. I didn't know that because I would agree to this, because I would put myself out there and be vulnerable and speak to you about my pain and my family's pain and the joys and all the steps that we've gone through in our healing process, I didn't know that this would help me finish my manuscript. I didn't know until it was. And as I signed the contract with Reverend Cynthia, and I started thinking and planning, what will my podcast look like? Who, who will I interview? What will I talk about? I knew that some people needed a voice. I knew that my mom needed a voice. So I wanted my mom to be one of my first interviewees. And she was. We distributed my mom's podcast, episode number four, You Have the Most Important Job Today, in early 2020. And then after that, I interviewed my older brother, Will, and then I interviewed my younger brother, Tony. And through this, I was able to help piece together important, important stories, important time, meaningful actions. All of these things were, were helpful to me in writing The Healing of a Shattered Soul. Because, friends, my soul was not the only one shattered that day. There were many souls shattered that day. There were so many people hurt and thrown off their target, thrown off their safety net, thrown off home plate, thrown off the table, thrown out of the car, tossed from what we know life is. So many ripples of fear and sorrow took place and started on April 13th, 2014. And yet, and yet, um, my story was the one that kept getting told. And my story was the one that was taking center stage. And maybe it's because I'm the one that's willing to speak. But as the person that's willing to speak about it, I have a platform to share other people's stories. And so in the healing of a shattered soul, I'm able to share stories of different people who came in our lives, not only on that day, but very specifically on April 13th, and then and then days later and weeks later, and how they weaved in and maybe out of our lives, and how we as family members weaved in and out of our own lives trying to piece together where we are now. And so we don't know what's next. We never know what's next. I like how my brother said we were heading one direction north and then we were shoved off of that path and now we're heading east and there might be some good things east. And I have found that. My goal with Real Grief, Real Healing is to shine a light on the healing of anyone that I interview, to shine a light on 
stories of sadness and grief and sorrow because universally we all have sorrow. Universally we all grieve. Individually is how we heal. And there's there's no necessarily right way and I kind of want to say there's no wrong way, but that's not a true statement. There are wrong ways to heal. And uh, we, my family, we, several of us went down those paths. There are wrong ways to heal your heart. And it's important that you find the right way to heal your heart, to heal your soul. And so through the podcast, and interviewing my family members. And then during the month of July, I pretty much set everything aside. If you were expecting any kind of communication with me in the month of July, most likely you did not get it. I used COVID to my advantage uh, at that moment, and I cut everyone off and stopped taking calls and didn't schedule anything. And I wrote like a fiend, and I got 12 chapters pretty much completely rewritten Brooke's help was amazing in her thought process and her care and her love of what I was trying to share and her support. I could hear her talking to me in my ear with each chapter I finished. Mindy, this story needs to be told. This story needs to be told, and I thank her so much for that. And so in the month of July 2020, I finished my 12th chapter And I started sending submissions. Oh, and I just, I'm so glad I have some confidence in myself. And and really, I'm so glad I'm not afraid to fail. My dad taught me, don't be afraid to fail. And I was in, uh, I was in gymnastics early on in my life. I, I failed a lot in gymnastics. I was not the best one on the team by, by, by any stretch. I, Um, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed gymnastics and I enjoyed cheerleading and, but I knew I learned how to fail and I'm laughing because I sent in submissions to nine publishers and two agents and I was denied. Every one of them denied me and for some reason or another, they each had a reason to say this is, this was not their genre, good luck, whatever. They all had something to say. But collectively, they all said no. And then, because I did a podcast with Bill Timaeus, I knew in July that I wanted to do a meaningful podcast around 9-11. It meant something to me to have a platform to be able to share with people a story of someone who experienced 9-11 differently than most of us. And I had the pleasure of interviewing Bill Timaeus, who himself is an amazing author. Oh, he's a great author, and he writes all the time. And I'm, I'm just envious of him and his writing. And uh, I dabble in it. I, I journal and I dabble. And so I did this podcast with Bill Timaeus, and we, and we distributed it. And then someone messaged me on LinkedIn and shared the podcast with Bill. And it was Front Edge Publishing. And I reached out to them and said, hey, who are you? I'm like, I have not submitted to you and you have not yet denied me. So who are you? And then I subsequently had a call or two and then three and then four. And in early December, I sent my manuscript to Front Edge Publishing. And I'm so... I'm grateful that they allowed me and helped me finish it. And right now, while I'm recording this, I don't even know if I'll have a contract with them. But I do know that they encouraged me to finish my story, as did so many of you and so many family and friends. But these steps, I'm just, I I just can't um, emphasize. I can't emphasize enough the steps that are put in front of us when we feel the nudge to move in a certain direction, and if it's healthy, if it's a healthy direction, we should move in that direction 
and it will cleanse us in some way and heal us in some way. And for all the people that held my hand when I couldn't pack up Reet's room, for all my for all my friends who came over and helped me take down all the memorabilia and decide what to do with Reet's clothing, for all the people that wished us farewell as we drove across the country to Florida. The fact that Reverend Cynthia Alice Anderson saw something in me and wanted me to do this podcast. That Dr. Michelle Robin wanted me to meet Cynthia in the first place. So many intricate weaves in and out of our lives that it's important to stop and pay attention and have gratitude. And I am, I am grateful for having the platform that I have right now to be able to share stories of those who have had a loss or a, a traumatic life event. Everyone I interview has not experienced a death. I say that, um, but most of the people I interview have experienced a death because those are the stories that I think I'm meant to tell. Those are the stories I'm meant to talk about. Friends, my next podcast is with a woman who's new in my life. I interview Susan Bro, who is Heather Heyer's mother. Heather Heyer was murdered August 12, 2017 at an alt-right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. And you're thinking to yourself, oh, I remember that. And there was one woman killed. Her mother is in my circle of friends, and I'm so grateful. I wouldn't have met Susan Bro if I hadn't met Christian Picciolini. I wouldn't have met Christian Picciolini if Irv Robinson hadn't introduced him to me via a TED Talk link. Do I want my dad and son back? Absolutely, every day. Every day. But we were knocked off course going north, and now we're going east. And I do everything I can to make the sun shine in the East for everyone I come in contact with. I love what Lucas said at the end of his podcast. He said, approach every, for every person, approach every conversation as if they're a friend. Everyone has worth. Find the worth in who you're talking with. And that's what we're trying to do. And in... The healing of a shattered soul. I touch on different stories. I touch on my own throughout. I touch on the story of my father and the love story I have with Reet and how our family was affected and how so many people helped pick up the pieces of our shattered souls. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being part of this journey and encouraging me to continue It's you who lift me up with your encouraging words. Friends, let's have a much happier, healthier, family-friendly, visiting, touching one another, hugging one another, but safe and healthy 2021. Thank you. Friends, thanks so much for joining me today for this podcast of Real Grief, Real Healing with Mindy Corcoran. If you want to dive deeper into how you might heal yourself or a friend, please pick up a copy of my book, Healing a Shattered Soul. Published on May 3, 2021, you can find my memoir anywhere books are sold. You will also find me in social media channels as Mindy Corcoran. Take time to help yourself heal. Accepting Courageous Kindness. Take time to heal another by giving courageous kindness. Together, we are better. Real Grief, Real Healing is copyright 2021 to 2022, Mindy Corcoran, all rights reserved. Our theme music is composed by Dave Croft and used with permission. This podcast is a production of 818 Studios.